In the last segment, we reviewed some results from linear algebra, and we'll put these to use now as we discuss discrete dynamical systems. We'll start by defining dynamical systems, then discuss fixed points and stability, then the important concept of topological conjugacy, which allows us to deduce the properties of one system by looking at another possibly simpler system. And for the rest of this segment, we'll focus on linear difference equations in Euclidean space, and we'll use the results from linear algebra that we developed in the last segment to identify conditions for the stability of fixed points in such systems. And our focus will be on linear systems that can be described by matrices having distinct eigenvalues, and we'll provide some justification for this at the end by arguing that the property of having distinct eigenvalues is generic within the set of matrices. A discrete dynamical system is just a pair consisting of a set x and a function f which is a self-map on x, and you should think of x as a metric space so it's endowed with a distance function. Now the function f tells us how the state of the system evolves from one period to the next, and in particular the state in period t, which we denote xt, is just the image under f of the state in the previous period. And if the initial state x0 is some point in x, the state xt can also be written as the image of x0 under the function f to the t, which is the tth iterate of f. And the initial state is also sometimes called the seed of the system. Now given any seed, the function f traces out a sequence of points in x, and this is referred to as a trajectory or orbit. We say that a point x star is the rest point or steady state of the system if it's a fixed point of the function f, and we say that a set s in x is invariant under f if the image of the set is a subset of itself, and the interpretation is the following. If a trajectory ever enters an invariant set, then it remains in s for all subsequent periods. We define a periodic point of period n as a seed x0 for which the image under the nth iterate of f is equal to x0. If x0 is a periodic point of period n, then if you start at x0, after n periods you'll be back at x0. And a periodic point x0 has minimal period n if n is the smallest positive integer such that f to the n of x0 is x0. And clearly a fixed point has minimal period 1. Now let's consider stability. We say that a fixed point x star is stable or Lyapunov stable if for every epsilon neighborhood of this point, there exists a delta neighborhood of the point, such that if you begin within the delta neighborhood of the point, then you remain within the epsilon neighborhood of that point for all subsequent periods. So intuitively, the point is stable if you remain close to that point, provided that you start sufficiently close to that point. We define the stable set of a fixed point x star as the set of all seeds that give rise to orbits that converge to x star. And we say that a stable fixed point x star is locally asymptotically stable, or a sink or an attractor, if there exists an epsilon neighborhood of this point that is contained in the stable set. The interpretation here is that if you start close enough to the point x star, then all orbits will converge to x star. And a point is globally asymptotically stable if all orbits converge to x star no matter where they start. A fixed point that is not stable is said to be unstable, and we call it a repeller or a source if there exists an epsilon neighborhood of the point, such that for all points other than the fixed point within this neighborhood, all orbits that begin within the neighborhood eventually leave the neighborhood. Now consider the important notion of topological conjugacy. Suppose you have two dynamical systems, x, f, and y, g. We say that these are topologically conjugate, or just conjugate, if there exists a homeomorphism, h, from x to y, such that the composition of h with f is equal to the composition of g with h. Recall that a homeomorphism is just a continuous bijection that has a continuous inverse. Now if there exists such a homeomorphism h, then the nth iterate of f can be expressed as shown on the slide. It's just equal to h inverse composed with the nth iterate of g composed with h. Now from this you can immediately deduce that h takes the nth point of the orbit of x under f to the nth point of the orbit of h of x under g. So the homeomorphism h and its inverse, which is also a homeomorphism, allows us to move back and forth between trajectories in these two dynamical systems. And you can easily check that if f and g are conjugate, then x star is a fixed point of f if and only if h of x star is a fixed point of g. And in fact, the two points will share the same stability properties. If x star is stable in the first dynamical system, then h of x star will be stable in the second, and so on. Now for the rest of this segment, we'll focus on linear systems in Euclidean space. So we say that a function f, which is a self-map on Rn, is a linear map if there exists an n by n real matrix A such that f of x is just Ax for all points x in Rn. And we say that it's an affine map if f is equal to Ax plus b for some vector b in Rn. 
and we'll see that if f is linear or affine, the stability properties of the fixed points of f will depend on the properties of the eigenvalues of a. Now we'll first consider the case in which the matrix A has distinct and real eigenvalues. So consider the linear map that's defined by the equation shown on the slide. The state in period T is just equal to A times the state in the previous period. If all the eigenvalues of A are real and distinct, then we know that there exists a matrix P such that P inverse AP is equal to lambda, where lambda is a diagonal matrix consisting of the eigenvalues of A. In fact, this matrix P is constructed by using the eigenvectors of A as its columns. Now we'll define a linear map, yg, also in Euclidean space, but where the matrix describing the evolution of states is this diagonal matrix lambda. Now define the function h from x to y as h of x is p inverse x, and note that this function h is a homeomorphism, and it satisfies precisely the conditions we need for the topological conjugacy of these two systems. The composition of h with f is equal to the composition of g with h, and this means from our definition of topological conjugacy, that the two systems, xf and yg, are topologically conjugate. We can deduce the properties of fixed points in the first system by looking at the properties of fixed points in the second. Now the second system is extremely simple. Although it's n-dimensional, it actually consists of n separate one-dimensional systems. And the properties of these are actually trivial. Note that it has a unique fixed point at the origin, and that all trajectories, no matter where they start, will converge to this point in the second dynamical system, yg, if and only if each eigenvalue of the matrix A has absolute value less than 1. But since the two systems are conjugate, we deduce that the unique fixed point of the first system, which is also at the origin, is globally stable if and only if each eigenvalue of A has modulus less than 1. Now this applies only if A has real and distinct eigenvalues. So let's consider the case of complex eigenvalues. Now we suppose that x is r to the 2n, and again define f of x by a matrix Ax. Suppose that the eigenvalues of A are distinct and complex, then we know from the last segment that they arise in conjugate pairs, and let alpha j plus or minus i beta j denote the jth pair of complex conjugate eigenvalues. In this case, again from the last segment, we know that there exists a matrix P, such that P inverse AP is equal to a block diagonal matrix, where each block is a 2 by 2 matrix, and the jth block is given by the matrix DJ as defined on the slide. Now define the linear map YG where again y is equal to r to the 2n, and g of y is equal to this block diagonal matrix multiplied by y. Now this second dynamical system, yg, is much simpler than the first, because it consists of n separate two-dimensional systems, where the subsystem j is described by the 2 by 2 matrix dj. Now again you can verify that the two systems are topologically conjugate, so we can deduce the properties of the first by looking at the properties of the second. And the properties of the second are actually well known. Each of the two-dimensional systems involves a rotation and a contraction if rj is less than 1, and a rotation and an expansion if rj is greater than 1. And so therefore, in the simpler system, yg, the unique rest point is stable if and only if rj is less than 1 for all j. Now this of course means that all eigenvalues must have a distance from the origin of less than 1 in the complex plane. In other words, the unique fixed point of xf, the original dynamical system, is globally stable if and only if each eigenvalue of A lies in the interior of the unit disk in the complex plane. Now we can put these facts together to discuss the general case of distinct eigenvalues. And again, we know from the last segment that if A has distinct eigenvalues, k of which are real and 2L of which are complex, then there exists a matrix P that can be used to transform A into a canonical form, and this is a block diagonal matrix as shown in the diagram. And if you define the linear map YG, where y is r to the k plus 2l now, and g of y is equal to this block diagonal matrix times y. Then again, the original system and the system yg are topologically conjugate. The latter system now consists of k plus l separate systems. k are one-dimensional, l are two-dimensional, and as before, the unique fixed point at the origin is stable if and only if every real eigenvalue is less than one in absolute value, and every complex eigenvalue lies within the unit disk in the complex plane. In fact, since you can express real numbers also in the complex plane, the unique fixed point of the system xf is globally stable if and only if each eigenvalue of the matrix A lies in the interior of the unit disk in the complex plane. And we can summarize all this as follows. Suppose that the matrix A has distinct eigenvalues, then a unique fixed point of the linear map xt is equal to A xt minus 1 is globally asymptotically stable 
if and only if each eigenvalue of a has modulus strictly less than 1. Now although this result only applies to linear systems, it's actually extremely useful even for the study of nonlinear systems, because as we'll see later in the course, the stability of a fixed point of a nonlinear system can be analyzed by finding a linear system that is topologically conjugate to the nonlinear system in a neighborhood of that fixed point. But we'll get to that later. The last thing I'd like to do in this segment is to argue that our focus on matrices with distinct eigenvalues is justified because the property of having distinct eigenvalues is a generic property for matrices. So to do this we need to introduce a concept of genericity. We say that a subset S of a metric space X is dense in X if every point of X is either a limit point of S or a point of S or both. Now recall that S is open in X if every point of S is an interior point. And we'll say that a property of X is generic if there exists an open and dense subset S such that all members of this subset possess the property. Now this is a very demanding requirement. However, it can be shown that if X is the set of all n by n matrices, and if S is a subset consisting only of those with distinct eigenvalues, then S is open and dense in X. In other words, having distinct eigenvalues is a generic property of matrices. And this justifies to some extent our focus on matrices which have distinct eigenvalues. Now in this segment the focus has been on linear maps, but we'll see that our results for linear maps are also useful in the analysis of nonlinear maps. But we'll deal with that later and I'll stop here for this segment.